Hi, this is your host, Sapnil Bharti. We are here at Coupon and Cloud Ready Con in Salt Lake City in Utah, and we have with us once again Sean O'Mara, CTO at Mirantis. Sean, it's great to have you back on the show. Great to be here as always. Always good to see you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Of course, we are going to talk about MKE4, but before we talk about I would just like to hear from you is that uh, how would you once again define Mirantis in this setup? Mirantis in this setup is the cloud native Kubernetes company. For us, Kubernetes is everything. The core of everything we do as a company is based on Kubernetes. Um, for the last five years now, we've even run all of our OpenStack products on top of Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is the heart of Mirantis, and our focus is cloud native solutions for our customers, providing the right level of support for all of their needs. This is day one, it's almost wrapping up, uh, which also means that you have a very good pulse of the audience, the discussions. So talk a bit about what kind of discussion you're hearing, what kind of folks are walking to your booth, what kind of conversation you're having. It's a good question. I mean, I spent a lot of my day talking to both analysts and journalists around the event today, as well as a number of people. Lots of talk about AI, of course. AI is the current hot topic for everybody. Um, lots of interest in the practicalities of running AI on top of infrastructure and how that collides. Uh, lots of questions of whether we should be focusing so heavily on AI at this event. Um, but I think AI is the future and that's where things are going. So yeah, this is the right focus for us today. And now let's talk about MK4. Um, just for, let's start with the, what is MK uh, and then why Mirantis came out and then we'll talk about the evolution. Sure, so let's start with the question of what, what is MKE? MKE is the Mirantis distribution of Kubernetes. Um, it's, we consider it a platform of Kubernetes, but not a pass. Um, it is part of the Docker heritage that we um, have earned from back from Docker over the years. Uh, it's, we have it running around 300,000 plus nodes over you know, several thousand customers. Um, it's a complete Kubernetes platform, so you can take it, deploy it, and you have a working Kubernetes out of the gate with all the basics, including the ingress, the RBAC, the CNIs, the CSIs, and a full support model around that to guarantee production level grade working at scale within our customers. The majority of our customers today, well, we've got a very broad range, but a lot of financial services and a lot of regulated environments. Um, so that's where MKE is right now. Um, as I mentioned, MKE is a you know, iteration of the Docker enterprise. Um, was based on a very particular architecture that Docker put together, well, we're going back six or seven years now. And we've had a goal to modernize the MKE architecture over the last couple of years. So we've now, with the new MKE 4 release, we've modernized that architecture, we've simplified that architecture, but really importantly, we've moved to a composable Kubernetes architecture. Um, MKE 3, was a lot more monolithic in its architecture and design. MKE4 has moved to a composable architecture based on K0s. So as you know, Mirantis delivered the K0s distribution for the first time in 2020. We've now gotten a lot of adoption of K0s. And we believe that K0s has reached that maturity point that it's now ready for our enterprise customers. As a result, we've created something called the Blueprint Operator. The Blueprint operator allows us to compose those Kubernetes platforms for our customers' needs. Um, the Blueprint operator allows customers to pick those services that they require to create that platform, as well as deploy and manage that MKE look and feel, which is really, really important to our customer base. Um, MKE4 is an in-place upgrade of MKE3, so it's really from a customer point of view, from a user point of view, it's just the next generation of the update. That architecture change happens magically, <laughs> no, completely uh, abstracted from the customer underneath the hood, and then brings that composability into the environments for large-scale Kubernetes clusters. When we look at Mirantis, as you mentioned, k Cosmos, Cosmotron, other, so if you just get it, you know, what other projects, products that are there to cater to this ecosystem and community? For sure, I mean, k zeros is at the core. So I mentioned k zeros. Um, it's really, k is focused on delivering a really high quality Kubernetes without external dependencies as a single binary for a wide range of use cases. But k is just Kubernetes. 
It has a lot of plugins and capabilities, but really it's just Kubernetes out of the box. Related to K0 is we have the Cosmotron project. Cosmotron is a primarily a bootstrap provider for the cluster API or CAPI, but it also provides a hosted control plane mechanism that allows you to create Kubernetes control planes as pods and then remotely manage workers as part of that. So you can do that either with CAPI or without CAPI. Uh, other projects that we've got going at the moment, also in the same ecosystem, is we've released the next edition of Marantis Secure Registry. This is based on Harbor, um, and we are contributing to the Harbor community as part of that move, where we're moving our existing customer base from MSR to Harbor over time, uh, making sure that all the capabilities that were built into MSR will also be in Harbor as we move forward. Those are the key open source projects. We've got some other cool projects going on at the moment. Um, I'm wearing the shirt for one of those projects. I don't want to go into too much detail, but it's a fully open source project focused on multi-cluster management and hybrid cloud management of Kubernetes, but not just at the cluster layer. We've moved up into the service management, state management, and observability layer. It's called Project 2A. The 2A is 0x2A. For those of you who can remember your hex, uh, it means 42. Um, as we're in a public forum, I won't go into too much of what the 42 connection is, uh, but it just proves the geeks at the Marantis executive team. Um, we're very much focused on helping and producing a world where Kubernetes is the ubiquitous abstraction layer for all infrastructure and all applications. And that's where we're moving forward with Project 2A at the moment. When we look at the whole you know, CNC of landscape or Kubernetes ecosystem, we have talked about some of the old pain points, you know, which were like complexity, scale, cost. But uh, we sometimes assume that everybody is a greenhorn, you know, everybody is dumb. But there are a lot of legacy players, there are a lot of traditional players who are looking at that market. But when they look at complexity or all those things, how do you look at that player to move, bring them from those old legacy system to this modern Kubernetes system? I think the reality is, so, so with MKE4 as an example, let's, let's look about, you know, talk about the real elephant in the room when we talk about legacy. Everybody's concerned about VMs. And obviously the broad common VMware world has changed a lot of what we talk about these days. So as we start to look at that, we've included, for example, KubeVirt as part of our MKE. MKE is also designed to be very easy to deploy and manage. Um, that UI for MKE will have a KubeVirt UI so that your traditional operator who's used to working through you know, UI point-click type UIs, um, and I don't think they're unsophisticated. I think those are very sophisticated operators in many ways. They're just used to a certain way of work. So we want to soften the transition for them by providing great UIs and great user experiences. Um, the world is rapidly moving forward though, and I think more and more people want to have Kubernetes in their environments. We want to make it easy to manage Kubernetes at scale. That's where, really where the project I spoke about earlier comes in. Um, how do we manage Kubernetes at very, very large scale, but without everybody having to become an expert, but if they have experts, those experts still have access to the core of the system, unchanged, you know, without any sort of lock-in so that they can continue to manage and create their own custom environments as they need to. And since you mentioned KubeWord, uh, did you feel any shock waves from the whole broad town VMware space here and how Mirantis is helping some of those customers? We do feel the shock waves. Um, you know, we've had a viable alternative to the VMware product for a long time in the form of our Mirantis OpenStack for Kubernetes. Um, really where KubeWord is coming in is for those customers who have smaller or medium-sized VMware deployments who are looking for alternatives. They're not necessarily replacing VMware. I mean, I still think VMware is a very solid product, but for a lot of reasons, they're looking for parallel alternatives. And this is where something like KubeVirt makes a lot of sense because Kubernetes clusters, easy to manage. We've solved that problem, put KubeVirt on top of it. Now you've got a very easy to manage VM environment and you can do it very affordably. Mosk, and OpenStack is aimed at much larger environments where people are trying to create private cloud alternatives to the VMware private cloud environments. And I, I hesitate to always say alternatives, it's, it's parallel options within environments. Um, 
So that's really what we're seeing. So we see a lot of customers who are deeply exploring ways to spread their workload into more baskets rather than the old, all the eggs in one basket type model, which was the VMware space. Right, and it does make a lot of sense, thank you. Now I'll go back to MKE uh, a bit. Uh, when, when you look at MKE4, is it ready for production? When people can start using it? So MKE, the release candidates are released. Um, we're announcing here today, today is our announcement. It'll be um, final GA available next week, Wednesday. I'm checking with my team to make sure I haven't got it off. It's next week, Wednesday. Um, and it, will, it has already gone out to some early, early test customers, and we will start upgrade migrations with our customer base um, early December. What kind of iteration do you see of MKE going forward? So MKE4, because of its composable nature, um, it's going to iterate along the same lines as K0s. So we've decoupled the Kubernetes iteration from the rest of the ecosystem iteration, which obviously there is a link. You can't just upgrade something if you change the Kubernetes API, but customers have a lot more choice over which API. Um, K0s is much closer to the head of Kubernetes, so customers will always have access to the latest. And then we're going to start to add more options or more blueprint options for customers to start to compose those environments as they move forward. MKE itself is very focused, as I said, on those large scale customers. Um, and our new project, which will be related with, two, with MKE parallel tracks, will start to take advantage of the more multi-cluster environments. Sean, once again, thank you so much for joining me today to talk about MKE and beyond that. Thanks for all those great insights. And as usual, I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Always good to talk to you.